We're back with a bonus conversation you'll only see here on CBS News New York. So let's talk about some of the things that are going to come up in this session that are so very important to the state of New York and to your constituents. First of all, top of the list, criminal justice. Governor Hochul said in her state of the state she wants the legislature to eliminate the, quote, least restrictive provision of the bail law, which forces judges to go easy in bail eligible cases. What are your thoughts on that? Well, what's interesting is she was talking about that in cases where bail can already be set. <laughs> so <laughs> even the people that oppose what we did aren't identifying that subgroup of people as the problem. And so, look, we'll have a discussion. We've had it over the last couple of years. Uh, we'll look at the data. We'll make informed decisions about this. Uh, but if you're talking about repeat offenders, which a lot of people do, that's already covered and bail is eligible. This is the, the misinformation that's been going on on this issue. So do you need a PR campaign? Because, you know, the whole idea of bail reform being blamed for, like, everything in New York um, got a lot of credibility during the governor's race and may have contributed to the fact that it was such a close race. So do you feel pressure to do something to make it to make the voters feel that you dealt with well, the issue? We do things differently in this, in this state senate, so we're not going to do things just because um, there's pressure from our opponents to do it if it's not the right thing to do. Uh, we're not going to lock people up who don't deserve to be locked up or uh, disproportionately hold people in jail because they don't have money, which is how the bail system has been working, uh, just because Lee Zeldin or someone is making an issue out of it. We'll look at the data. If the data justifies a change, we'll make it. If it does not, we won't. Are there other criminal justice reforms you would concern? Like, for example, I know some groups say that older uh, inmates who have been there for a long time, there's probably no reason why they're going to ever commit a crime again, that they should be allowed to, to be released. Well, each of these issues, I'm going to give you the same answer, which is let's look at the data. Let's, you know, we need to make sure New Yorkers are safe first and foremost, but then we also don't want injustices going on behind bars. And so striking that balance is, is the trick. So the MTA is asking for a bailout. No surprise, it's to, it's, there's a lot of problems. They either want more money from the legislature or they want a dedicated revenue stream. Which do you think is more likely? Uh, what they need is both, to be honest. Um, I'm working with Assemblymember Mamdani uh, in Queens as well. We put forward this ambitious proposal that attempts to put the MTA on sound financial footing once and for all. And doing How it do you possibly do that? Well, what you need is more money, right? I mean, uh, that's the point. If, but yes, the MTA can do a better job of managing its resources, and we have to insist that they do that. But at the end of the day, when ridership is down so significantly because of the pandemic, um, we need them to, to have the money to function. And by the way, when the MTA is functioning properly, more people get on the subways and buses, which is why our plan would provide not just the money to fill their uh, budget deficit that they have, but also would insist on faster train service, free buses, is part of that plan, uh, as well as uh, no fare hikes. No fare hikes for how long? Uh, for four years. People are going to love you for that. Yeah. So if there has to be a new tax that's a dedicated revenue stream for the MTA, do you have any um, favorites, like things that you think you, that might be passed that would be dedicated to go to the MTA to help plug their gap? Well, I've had legislation going for a couple of years now that would uh, have a tax on the wealthy to fund the MTA. I understand the governor has said that's not what's something she's interested in. Um, so what we wanted to do in this proposal, we didn't identify a specific stream. We want to make that part of the budget conversation overall. There is some ability to take existing resources uh, and, and allocate them to the MTA. Uh, this en entire proposal would be about 1.5% of the current um, state budget. Uh, but also we will need to find new revenue from somewhere. Where that is, we can have a conversation. So uh, Liz Kruger, the finance chair of the Senate, suggested to me here on the show that maybe a tax on people, a tax on companies that provide fuel might be an idea. Is that something you would consider? I'm open to any ideas that make sense uh, and that would help. And by the way, when you fix the subways, it's not just the people who ride the subways who would benefit. Uh, it's also the employers who those employees are going back to work in their offices, um, and we want to encourage them to, to get back on the subways. So um, this is something that uh, is a benefit not just to the people physically on the, on the mass transit, but for everybody in the city. So let's talk about what steps the legislature could take to ease the financial burden on working families, like tying the minimum wage to inflation. Good idea, bad idea? Great idea. Um, we would have loved to do that even uh, earlier, and I'm glad the governor has um, made that a priority. Energy discounts for low-income people? Of course, absolutely. 
Suspension of the gas tax, not so much? Um, look, it's a question of priorities. We did temporarily suspend the gas tax uh, when the prices were through the roof. It seems things have stabilized now, uh, at least relative to where they were. Um, but these are all conversations we're going to have. Um, my colleagues have different opinions than I do. There's 42 of us in the majority, so we'll, we'll hash it out and, and work with the governor and the is assembly. There any, is there anything that you can do in terms of the rates set by the power companies to try to get them to reduce it? Well, for one thing, uh, we cannot approve their request for rate hikes, so that's a start, and, uh, and that is something that is we... Is that been... a legitimate thing to do? Of course it's a legitimate thing to do. When you look at the amount of money that they are uh, throwing at their executives um, while simultaneously asking ratepayers for more, there's definitely the ability to uh, pare back rate increase requests uh, and find some of that money internally. As somebody who has to use power from Con Ed, I'm saying right on. <laughs> Thank you, Marcia. <laughs> I shouldn't endorse it, but I got to tell you, I think, I think yes. consumers across the state are feeling the pinch, and especially this winter because of winter, you know, heating costs. And I think it's something that they would cheer you on about. Yep. So, what should be done to deal with people living with mental illness? Do we need more psychiatric beds, and if so, where? Uh, most definitely, yes. That was another thing I applauded in uh, the governor's State of the State speech, a, a, a focus on it. And by the way, that issue is linked to the crime issue. Uh, there's sure. so much connection between mental illness and the, uh, and the crime problem we've been seeing uh, that if we get people the treatment they need, uh, that is ultimately the answer to a lot of this because you're not putting them at Rikers Island where their problems are only going to get worse and eventually they're going to be back on the streets anyway, but you're giving them the treatment they need to be productive members of society. So where can we find these beds? I mean, what about Creedmoor? I know it's in Queens, but, you know, is that a hot potato or is there land there that you could build some stuff? I, I think we can find. We had beds that we closed down during the I pandemic. So uh, I'm sure we can find the space if we want to. It's a question and of whether we... jails we'll, upstate? Well, it's a question of whether we want to put the money into into funding the beds in the first instance. I'm confident we could find a location if we get that far. Do you think we'll get money for it? Yes. All right. We're going to hold you to that. So affordable housing, another big, big um, issue in the governor's state of the state. She wants to build 800,000 units of affordable housing statewide. Is that an attainable goal? I hope so, but we need it. Uh, as long as it's truly affordable, what we've seen in New York and the city particularly is they talk about affordable housing units and then no one can afford to actually pay for what they call affordable uh, in these buildings. So, so do you have to give um, some tax benefits to developers to do this? I'm, I'm not against that so long as the affordable units are truly affordable and we have protections for tenants in their existing homes. Because there's two things we need to do create more space for people, working people to live and be able to afford to live in the city, but also protect the people that currently have homes from being evicted. So what about the idea of building affordable housing near train stations so that people would have access to transportation to get back into the city for jobs? That's a question I think particularly in the suburbs is what, uh, what the governor is focused on and because in the city we already have lots of development well, around they subways. They also are talking about building them on the new, there's some, there's some new stations they're building in the Bronx for That's them. That's true. Yep. Look, I, I, I want to be very careful not to step on the toes of my colleagues who represent these areas. And so right. there will be a robust discussion. Um, we want to first and foremost get the opinion of the people who live in these communities and would be affected by them, understanding that we do need more affordable housing. So the last issue, I know it's not exactly a state issue, but I wonder what your thoughts are about closing Rikers because new community jails don't seem to have enough space to uh, deal with the number of inmates that are there. Your thoughts about that? Look, Rikers has been uh, a problem for a long time, and so if we could find a way to responsibly close it, I would be all in favor of it. I happen to live five blocks away from the Rikers Island Bridge in Astoria, so this is a neighbor I live with. I visited the island many times to see this, this, the uh, conditions there. I hope so. I think so. Um, and we just need the will to get it done and, and find replacements. Okay, well, thank you for joining me, and I thank you also for joining me as well. Thanks a lot. Thanks so much.